Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to my live stream. The reason I'm doing this live stream is for myself to review the doctrines because in Matthew 13 it says that those who don't understand the doctrines, Jesus said they will be, uh, the devil will get them. Let me just get the quotation. So I wanted to review the doctrines for myself and uh, as an added motivation I wanted to put it live on Facebook. Let me just get a quotation while... Okay, the quotation is in... <clears throat> because there was this uh, report that said that backsliders were because of... were not about doctrines. But I looked in the Bible and found out the biblical basis of backsliding is in Matthew 13. Jesus said in Matthew 13, 23, Jesus said that the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. No, this is the good seed. Let me check the... Okay, Matthew 13, 19. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is the seed sown along the path. Okay, so those who don't understand the word of God, we are in danger of being snatched away by the evil one. So, I want to review the doctrines for myself and if other people want to listen and watch and participate and ask questions, then that will be more useful. Okay, let's go to our presentation. Number two. But before that, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from our sins. Give us with an understanding and study your word. Let those who are hearing and listening give us the understanding of our word that it may change our lives and strengthen our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Secrets of the Ancient Scrolls. The topic is about the wonderful Bible. There was a man named Stephen Marsh. Her aunt died and she gave him a Bible. But uh, she, she, he, he left the Bible in the attic and uh, lived a very uh, quite a small life, uh, pension in his life for nearly 30 years. Then he opened the Bible later and he counted thousands of dollars of cash <laughs> inside the Bible that his aunt gave him. So like this guy, sometimes our Bibles are staying uh, here and there and we don't know that it's full of treasures, our Bible. There are many people who don't know how important the Bible is and it is full of treasure. Their question is, can it be trusted? Of course, no one questions the fact that the Bible is a fascinating book. Actually, it is 66 books written at different times by different authors over a period of 1,600 years. There is the Old Testament of 39 books and the New Testament of 27 books. 45 different authors wrote these books, yet it is an amazing agreement that can only be explained by a common source of inspiration. Most of the authors of the Bible never knew each other. They were from different occupations, fishermen, shepherds, preachers, farmers, statesmen, kings, or physicians, yet there is unity and harmony among the books that they wrote. It can only be explained by acknowledging that God gave this book to us and inspired it in men in a miraculous way. Peter wrote for in 2 Peter 1.21, For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Paul said in 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
the reason God chose to write uh, the Bible through human people to human penmen is that because face-to-face -face communication is not possible because we will die because of our sin. When God walked and talked together in uh, with men in Eden, there was no need for a prophet to write down what God wanted men to know. But when Adam sinned, he hid from God for he was fearful and guilty about what he had done. When God asked Adam when, where he was, Adam replied, I heard your voice and I was afraid and I hid myself. That is from Genesis 3.10. Amos 3.7, since God could no longer communicate face to face, he chose to reveal what he wanted to us through his prophets. Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Around 1500 BC, God inspired Moses to write the book of Job, the first five books of the Old Testament, which together were often referred to as the, the law. Uh, by this time, Israel had become a nation of several million people. Now they would be able to read the Ten Commandments and the instructions God had given to Moses. By that, a long, was a long time ago, uh, but that was a long time ago. In, is the Bible as we know it today still accurate and dependable? Until 1947, the earliest manuscripts we had of the Old Testament were copies from around AD 900. But then a little Bedouin shepherd boy discovered a cave containing ancient leather scrolls preserved in clay pots. Soon, many more similar caves were discovered containing hundreds of hand-copied portions of the Old Testament. The Isaiah scroll found among them had been written in 125 BC, over a thousand years before the oldest manuscript had been found out up to that time. <clears throat> it contained the entire book of Isaiah. But did it agree with later copies or had there been serious changes or copy errors made through the centuries? According to uh, Frederick Kenyon, president of British School of Archaeology, in one chapter of 166 words, there is only one word, three letters, in question after a thousand years of transmission. And this word does not significantly change the meaning of the message. The Christian can take the whole Bible in his hand and say, without fear or hesitation, that he holds in his hand the true word of God, handed down without essential loss from generation to generation throughout the centuries. Critics of the Bible, even as recent as a century ago, had found many reasons to raise doubts about the Bible. But these doubts have one by one been silenced by archaeologist shovels. <clears throat> Until the 19th century, little was known about the ancient past except for what the Bible had to say about it. No one could read the high hieroglyphic writings of Egypt for example, uh, to decipher their history, a record of history. But in, then in, in 1798, Napoleon led a military expedition to Egypt along with his soldiers. He took dozens of artists, linguists, and scientists to explore the intriguing land. Everywhere they saw ancient relics containing unreadable messages. One of Napoleon's soldiers discovered what became known as the Ros Rosetta Stone, a black stone four feet long and two and a half feet wide. This stone slab, now housed in the British Museum, played an important role in unlocking the secrets of Egyptian writings. It contained an ancient decree written in Greek, Demotic Egyptian, and hieroglyphics. <clears throat> in 1922, a brilliant young French scholar by the name of Jean Francius Champollion startled the world by deciphering the, for the first time the hieroglyphics on the Rosetta Stone. Now, the large collection of inscriptions was opened for study and comparison. And not surprisingly, these, the stories they told confirmed the accounts found in the Bible. The stones cried out what the Bible had said was true. The archaeologists continue to dig. They continue to find evidence that are confirmed that confirms Bible history. Take, for example, the discoveries of Tel Marduk. This is the site of the city of Elba in Syria, which was once a rich and advanced society of almost 300,000 people. In a school of scribes attached to the city's palace, <clears throat> 1, 000, uh, 14,000 inscribed clay tablets and fragments were found, dating back to at least 2300 BC. More than a century of municipal records were written on those tablets. 
The Elba tablets are important for several reasons. First, because they prove without a doubt that written communication and language existed at the time of Moses, and even long before, something that critics had questioned for years. Second, they are important because they refer to both a creation story and a flood story, <coughs> which amazing similarities with amazing similarities to the biblical account. And third, because they mention names and places that are mentioned in the Bible, like Abraham, Esau, Israel, and Sinai. But the real surprise in the Elba tablet was the mention of Sodom and Gomorrah. Excuse me, let me open my door because my computer is overheating. Check my testing. Prior to the discovery, there had been no historical reference of these cities. Outside of the Bible, scholars considered them to be mythical sites that only existed in the Bible writers' minds. But once again, the Bible had been shown to be accurate and true, as King David said, Psalms 119-160, Thy word is true from the beginning. Until the 19th century, many scholars believed that Queen Semiramis built Babylon. But the Bible said differently, quoting Nebuchadnezzar as saying, Is it not great Babylon that I have built? Daniel 4.30. So which is it? Who really built Babylon? <clears throat> In 1899, Robert Coldeway began digging up the old ruins of Babylon, uncovering tens of thousands of kiln-baked bricks bearing the stamp of King Nebuchadnezzar. His name was impressed upon the bricks that made up the walls and temples of the city, and a cuneiform tablet describing Nebuchadnezzar's achievements was also found by the archaeologists. On it, the king was quoted saying, The fortifications of Esagila and Babylon I strengthened and established the name of my reign forever. And if it, this evidence isn't enough, the East India House inscription, <coughs> now in London, devotes six columns of Babylonian writing to a description of a massive building projects of Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible's account was right all along. And we shouldn't be surprised. God's word says, I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Isaiah 45, 19. Another mystery of secular history was the absence of Belshazzar as ruler of Babylon. The Bible names him as the ruler who witnessed the mysterious handwriting on the wall of the banquet hall. Was he only an invention in Daniel's imagination? <clears throat> History records that Nab Nab Nabodinus, who followed Nebuchadnezzar, entrusted his, the throne to his son Belshazzar while he was away for a number of years. Tablets have now been discovered which confirm the existence of this individual name by the Bible. Here is the one of those tablets says, As to Belshazzar, the exalted son, the offspring of my body. So that solves the mystery. Do thou place the adoration of the great deity in his heart, may he not give way to sin. May he be satisfied with life's abundance, and may reverence for the great divinity dwell in the heart of Belshazzar, my firstborn favorite son. <clears throat> In the closing chapter of David, Daniel, we read the following, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So, knowledge would be increased not only on the scientific world, but also in relating to the accuracy of God's word. Bricks and cylinders, tablets and stone slabs, <clears throat> manuscripts and monuments all confirm the reliability and credibility of the Bible. Excuse me. Check my test. So, by yet another compelling argument exists for the trustworthiness, but yet another compelling argument exists for the trustworthiness of Scripture, its ability to accurately foretell the future. Isaiah says, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 says, I am God, it is, uh, and there is no other, declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times, things that are not yet done. So, God can predict the future, revealing events far into the future. He demonstrates to the world that the Bible is not just another book, it is God's book. 
Before Babylon had even reached the height of its power, God's book foretold its call. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldean pride, will be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. For his plan is against Babylon to destroy it. The name of the man who would lead the armies against Babylon was prophesied 150 years before his birth. And so was the exact way in which he would do it. Thus saith the Lord, who is anointed to Cyrus, I will open before him the double doors, Isaiah 45, 1. Were these very specific prophecies of the Bible fulfilled? In the Persian Hall of the British Museum stands the Cyrus Cylinder, discovered in the ruins of Babylon. On this, on this clay cylinder, Cyrus tells of his conquest, and it confirms that Babylon fell just as the Bible had predicted. The Bible not only foretold the fall of Babylon, but it also predicted it would never be rebuilt. Jeremiah 51.37 says, Babylon shall become a heap. <clears throat> it will never be inhabited, but wild beasts of the desert will lie there and the hard houses will be full of full of owls. Only God could foresee the future and predict so accurately the fate of a then mighty empire. The explorer Austin Layard describes the site of ancient Babylon as he found it. Shapeless heaps of rubbish cover for many an acre the face, the face of the land, a naked and hideous waste. <clears throat> Owls start from the scanty thickets and the foul jackal tell through the furrows. Because uh, of Babylon's former glory, nothing remains but its name on a signpost in the roadside that is now modern Iraq. The ruins revealed that Bible is indeed true. We can agree with the prophet. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Isaiah 40 verse 8. And friend, if God can accurately predict the future events, hundreds of years before they happen, can we doubt for a moment his ability to know accurately our own future? You see, the Bible is more than just reliable history, accurate facts, and fulfilled prophecy. The Bible tells of a God who knows and loves you and me. It tells of a God who sent his son to die on Calvary's cross to die for our sins and save us in his eternal kingdom. So it makes difference for us personally if the Bible is dependable and accurate. Either Jesus the Son of God died on the cross for you and me or he did not. Either he is either he was who the Bible says he was or he is not. He was not. And all the evidence points to the fact that yes, we can trust the central message of the Bible and its story of love and salvation for us. So John 5.39 says, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. Okay, John 5.39 Jesus was speaking of the Old Testament, for the New Testament had not yet been written. The scriptures a while ago. And as you turn the pages of the Bible, all the New Testament alike, you will discover that they prophesy of a coming Messiah and tell of his mission of love and salvation. Jesus told his disciples in Luke 24, 44, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled. It's written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms concerning me, the living word of God. The Bible contains an amazing power to change life, transform human character, give strength to the weak, courage to the depressed, and hope to the dying. This is why it is called the living word of God, Hebrews 4. <clears throat> All through history, the power of the Bible to change lives has been demonstrated over and over. Angry people have become peaceful, and wicked and immoral people have become pure and clean. Drunkards have been delivered from alcohol. Thieves have stopped stealing. You don't have to look far today to find hardened criminals in prison who have been changed into joyful Christians and found freedom in Jesus. Marriages headed for divorce have been saved and filled with new love through the power of God's word. No one can read the Bible faithfully without God's book changing him or her. And if you spend each time a day in God's word, my friend, it will change you also. <clears throat> That is because at the heart of the Christian religion is God's desire to change and transform lives. That's what Jesus spent his time doing through the power of his word, rebuking their fears and correcting their misunderstandings, lives were changed. John 8.32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set, uh, make you free. It is the truth that sets us free, truth about ourselves, yes. 
But even more importantly, the truth about who God is. His unconditional love for us is not based on our performance, His patience with us when we fail and make mistakes, His compassion for us when we're hurting, and His sympathy for our helplessness and our inability to change ourselves. The truth of God is, as revealed in the Bible, liberating and revolutionary. There is no greater power in the world to touch hearts and change lives. But God's word can only change those who are willing to be changed. Those who are willing to accept Jesus Christ, the one the Bible truths draw our heart to know and love. You see, the Bible is not just a book of ideology and philosophy. It's not just useful advice. It's God's love letter to you and me and his invitation to a personal relationship with him. There is a story of a ship named the Bounty by the power of God to change lives. In, nine, in 1790, Captain Bly and his crew uh, went to the ship but because of cruel leadership and mistreatment of the crew, there was a mutiny and Fletcher Christian, the leader of the community, set Bly and 18 of the crew adrift in a small boat. They managed to find their way back to England <coughs> because of the expert ability of Captain Bly to navigate. But the crew on the bounty did not fare we very well, but they ended up on the uninhabited Pitcairn Island. They burned the bounty so they could not be traced. In Tahiti, Bly had been taken on board a number of women and children and a few native men. Trouble followed the mutineers as they learned to make liquor. <laughs> there were murders and crimes before long. There was only one man left, John Adams, and a number of women and children. John Adams searched until he found the Bionti's Bible, which had been stored away in a chest. He started reading it, and as he did so, a tremendous change came over him. He realized that an important responsibility had come to him to provide a future for these children. He began to educate them on how to read and write and how to live. The amazing transformation, the entire population of the island attracted attention of passing vessels, then the British government, and finally the whole world. This Bible, my friend, can change your life also. When we read the Bible, the same Holy Spirit which inspired the Bible writer to write down God's word centuries ago transforms our lives as we study it. It is our privilege to study God's word with an open mind and in simple faith. Say, O oh Lord, show me your truth and I will follow it. Reveal any changes I need to take in my life and I will choose to make it. So that is the end of the presentation. Do you have any questions? Okay, good evening everyone.